folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. We're now in October, which is Halloween month. So why not review a supernatural horror film that came out after my 11th year birthday. <laughs> yep, May 3rd, 1996, which surprisingly became a sleeper hit. And that is The Craft. A story about four outcast teenagers from a fictionalized Los Angeles area Catholic high school that actually turn out to be witches. Yeah, they perform witchcraft for their own gain, but soon encounters their negative repercussions. Yeah. Which has, uh, of course, uh, Nev Campbell, Canadian actress from Party of Five, Catwalk, and she went on to do the screen films the same year as this movie. You got uh, Robin Tunney from Empire Records, but she went on to do um, movies like End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then later went on to do TV series uh, Prison Break and The Mentalist. Uh, first of bulk, as you may know, she was from the movie Return to Oz as Dorothy. She later went on to do films like Imaginary Crimes uh, before this. And then she went on to do The Water Boy with Adam Sandler, Kathy Bates, and Henry Wrinkler. Great movie. Love that comedy. And she went on to do other stuff too in her career. Yeah, uh, this is of course the double feature uh, Nev Campbell <laughs> movies right here that was released by Sony. Yeah, because it includes Wild Things. Uh, but I'm basically reviewing The Craft. Yeah, I got to <laughs> see the back here. Um, there is of course a Blu-ray release that Sony put out back in 2009. I would love to get that someday. But I know there's also a collector's edition that was released by Screen Factory, aka that's the label for Shell Factory. And I would have loved to get that too, or perhaps maybe just get that one. Yeah, which actually has some, well, some nice features, but the sad part is they couldn't get the, the original cast members to, to do their interviews. Yeah, I think that's a shame. I also forgot to mention Rachel True was another actress who went on to do the movie Half Bake. Yeah, so right here. Now, as you may already know, there's going to be an upcoming sequel, which I know they've been teasing us to do a remake of this. It's going to be called The Craft Legacy. What else is going to be produced by Blumhouse? <laughs> yeah. Not looking forward to that. I just saw the trailer, and you just got some plain generic uh, female actresses that that had nothing on Nev Campbell, Robin Tunney, Marissa Bulk, and Rachel True. So, exactly. So, boy, I'm not gonna look forward to this one. It just feels more like any of those direct-to-video sequels that Sony put out. Uh, back in the 2000s, you know, when, when they took all these popular films from the 90s and they just end up doing their own sequels, it's pretty much in the same league. <laughs> okay. Well, the movie um, was a sleeper hit when it came out. So, um, for its 15 million budget, it made like 55.6 million. Not bad. Um, that is until Mission Impossible came along. <laughs> I know my mom wanted to see this movie when it came out, and I think she did. Lucky her. I, I wanted to check this out, too. Um, because, you know, I, I love to see films that goes for this idea of, of outcast teenagers and the fact that they are going for witchcraft. I mean, this turned out to be my favorite witchcraft film, joining in with... The Witches from 1990, uh, The Witches of Eastwick from 1987, 
And also, yeah, like, they have The Witch from 2015. But either way... Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, Hocus Pocus. <laughs> I... I know. I, I just got up. So my, my mind isn't <laughs> set up here. <laughs> but I'm getting there. Don't worry. I'm, I'm just trying to you know, focus here. So I'm just going to review the movie right now. It stars Marissa Bulk, Robin Tunney, Neff Campbell, Rachel True, Skeet Elwich, yeah, who went on to do films like The Newton Boys, Chill Factor, among others. Cliff D. Young, as you may remember him from films like The Secret of Myra, as well as Pulse, the horror film from 1988, you know, about the electricity that's terrorizing the, the neighborhood of Los Angeles. Interesting that he's in another <laughs> Los Angeles area in this fantasy horror film. Uh, Christine Taylor, yes, Ben Stiller's wife, but he was in, she was in TV shows like Hey Dude, as you may know, but then she was in movies like the Brady Bunch movies, where she played uh, Marsha Brady. <laughs> yeah, she looked like a Marsha Brady anyway. How about others? Rebecca Meyer, who later went on to do Road Trip, as well as uh, Rat Race, great actor. Nathan Neal uh, Marston, Helen Shaver, who I believe she was in a movie called The Believers. That's interesting, she was doing yet another horror film, The Supernatural. Uh, Sampta Serna, William Newman, and Brenda Strong. It's written by Andrew Fleming, joining in with Peter Filardi, and it's directed once again by Andrew Fleming, who by the way, had directed a horror film called Bad Dreams. Didn't care for that one. I would say this is his better film. There's going to be spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. But if you have, you don't have to worry about it. So here it goes. The movie begins where we meet a young, troubled teenage girl with unusual abilities named Sarah Bailey, who's played by Robin Tunney, who just moved from San Francisco to Los Angeles on this very beautiful hollow uh, mansion that needed some work on this particular you know, rainy night, as you can tell. Joined by her father, Mr. Bailey, played by Clifton Young, along with her stepmother. All of a sudden, this uh, old vagrant who brought in his snake has started harassing her, and then Mr. Bailey had kicked them out and killed the snake. The following day, she enrolls at a fictionalized Catholic school in the Los Angeles area called St. Bernard Academy, where she forms a friendship of free outcast girls who happen to be rumored to be witches coming from the students. Bonnie Harper, played by Neff Campbell, who bears all these burn scars that she had from an auto, from an auto accident since she was a little girl, Nancy Downs, played by Fressa Bulk, who her family had lived in a trailer with an abusive stepfather. And with Shell Zimmerman, who was a black girl subjected to racial bullying uh, by all these um, three white girls, maybe even more, including the bobble-headed bleach blonde named Laura Lizzie, who's played by Christine Taylor on her swimming and diving team. Yeah, where she actually performs a dive, but she accidentally uh, misses that particular uh, somersault that she was doing. At the same time, Sarah had became attracted to a football team member. It was a jock named Chris Hooker. who's was played by Skeet Elwich, uh, joined by his group of friends, very humorous ones, named Trey and Mitt, who are played by Nathan Neal Marsden and Breck and Meyer. Uh, therefore, Bonnie, Nancy, and Rochelle have worshipped a Delta named Manon, which at this point on, when Bonnie observes Sarah during the levitation of a pencil in class, 
she and the group have become convinced that Sarah might be the right girl to form this particular circle that they have, a coven as the fourth, which makes them all powerful. Yeah, earth, wind, water, and fire. The same vagrant that's been harassing Sarah uh, while she was walking around in the Broadway section, yeah, that's where you spot all these old feeders and all. Suddenly, the vagrant got run over by a car, hit his head on the side wheel, and was killed. It was soon begin to find out that she was actually being saved by the free outcast girls. And that's where they went straight into their secret uh, place in Echo Park where they talk about what just happened there for their situations. And we also learned that uh, in the past, Sarah actually was committing suicide by slitting her wrist. Uh, after a day with Quiss, somewhere on the rooftop of Echo Park, um, Sarah's upset to find out that he has spread a false rumor that they had sex and she was terrible in bed somewhere at his place. But when Sarah confronts him, he treats her disrespectfully right in front of her friends. Right in front of his friends. And that's where all four girls, you know, they brought in all these uh, magical spells that they had, you know, all the books, all the potions that they got. They're trying to form together because they just um, went to a, a secret spot so that way they could perform their magic. Hoping this will be real. Yeah, they brought in a dagger. They explain all their um, natural spells here. And they flick their fingers, you know, with blood. They pour it into the potion cup. They drink it. And that's how it all happened where all these um, butterflies appeared. Yeah. Anyway. So as a response, Sarah casts a love spell on him, which Shell casts a revenge spell on this racist bully, as we all know, Laura. And Bonnie casts a spell for Booty, and Nancy just uses her power. It soon became clear that their spells have been very successful, hard to believe, and that's when Chris had became infatuated with Sarah. All the scars that Bonnie has had miraculously healed. Uh, they actually did a levitation trick <laughs> on Rochelle um, in uh, Bonnie's bedroom, you know, just to see how this will work. Uh, I thought that was cool. And of course, for Laura, who had to harass Rochelle over her curly hair, that's what we learn. Find out that Laura had lost her hair and it suddenly got worse after it turns out to be. At home Nancy had invisibly causes her stepfather to have a heart attack you know, after started uh, abusing the, her mother and soon they inherited um, his life insurance policy you know, after he died and now they actually bought a high-rise apartment complex where she now has a, a jukebox and all this other wonderful stuff. So soon they went to the bedroom, Nancy's bedroom, to talk about how these spells actually work. And this is where Nancy became so greedy and so psychotic. And for power, she encouraged the others to join in a rite called Invadication of the Spirits, where they go to the beach. Um, Nancy just brought in a snake in a jar. Uh, Rochelle brought in a goldfish. Bonnie brought in a butterfly in a jar. And Sarah just brought in a canary in a birdcage. They formed the circle, the compass. Um, they revealed their spells, all their readings that they have them memorize on this particular stormy night and that's when their powers work 
And all of a sudden, by the time they were awakened at the beach, we learned that uh, Nancy was walking through the ocean, yeah, walking through water, and then all of a sudden, a group of sharks, you know, hammerheads, uh, regular sharks, and all the other kinds, were at the beach uh, in the sand piles. They were all dead. They knew that their powers actually had work. So at that point on, because she did struck by lightning and all, she lacks empathy and begins to take in risks with her life and those of others. And the magical spells for the girls had soon led to negative consequences, which Bonnie became aggressively narcissistic. Rochelle finds Laura traumatized by her baldness and sobbing hysterically. Chris attempts to rape Sarah when she rejects his continuing advance, but in the supposed retaliation, that's when Nancy disguises herself as Sarah to perform revenge on him. And this is where she actually put a spell on him and just throws him off um, the bedroom window and fell all the way down into the pavement and was killed. So now Sarah was very shocked what just happened and this is where she broke off with the group only leaving just uh, Bonnie and Rochelle and just have Nancy out of it and that's where Nancy just found out about what just happened and this is where Nancy starts tricking uh, Sarah performing all these uh, accidents and harming all these people around, you know, killing them and including uh, Chris's friends and all and what's worse harming Sarah's uh, family uh, during a during a flight that they had to go and then that's when she's all alone and then Nancy joining in with the girls um, perform all these all visions of swarms full of snakes, insects, and rats. Tried to induce her on committing suicide, which Nancy cuts uh, Sarah's uh, wrist. And then that's where Sarah just went straight to the bathroom, or the bedroom for that matter, trying to escape from all this, uh, all this madness that they perform from all these magical spells and that's where she starts to perform her own magical spell to use against her friends yeah I mean which <laughs> that's where we see uh, reflections of both uh, Bonnie and Rochelle negative times three yeah where we begin to see uh, Rochelle's hair falling out the same way that Laura had suffered and um, we begin to see the burned scars on her face for Bonnie, so they all left. And that's where we get the battle, mono a mono, between Sarah and Nancy. By tricking her, attacking her, you know, using all these uh, roaches and stuff on her. You know, the snakes with, with her hands you know, uh, from her fingers and, and all of that. Yeah, just like how she performed all this, all these swarms at, at her. So now we begin to find out who's prophetic. But then, at that point on, Nancy starts to attack her with the dagger. Before she was being pushed away, all the way straight into the glass mirror. All these uh, glass shards uh, are all shattered around. And now she's being taken into a mental ward. Uh, Sarah's family has been safe. Apparently, uh, we learned that Bonnie and Rochelle, along with Nancy, had just performed all these magical spells on her as a practical joke. But she learned about that, and now, when she uses her powers uh, to actually begin to find out if she even has them, she still does. 
where that's what she makes the entire sky, you know, all cloudy and, and all windy and everything. And this is where she tells Bonnie and Rochelle, you got to be careful because you don't want to end up like Nancy. Yeah, that's how we saw Nancy at the mental ward. So, already seen. I'm flying. I'm flying. I'm flying. Yeah. yeah. Just an awesome movie. And what a surprise. I mean, I was always into these stories, you know, about outcasts, the people. Like, we want to get to know them better more than everyone else. Because we always have the focus on all the popular ones that are that turn out to be assholes and all. So I thought they really maintained the story very well too and the witchcraft that they performed was just magnificent. Uh, yeah and, and it, it felt more real too. The special effects that was done by Sony Imageworks were ahead of its time for by 1996 standards. Um, you definitely get to see the scenes were like for example Sarah's nightmare where you saw you know Bonnie, Rochelle and Nancy all flying through the bedroom window which they shot this on a green screen uh, and they had to move around on their harness straight to their hips which I know they had trouble um, which was very um, impressive um, but they blend in very well with um, practical effects all the way around. They use exactly all the tools they needed. So the, the effects themselves were just more memorable. So it shows that you can actually do everything with it. Uh, there's of course that one scene too where Sarah went inside uh, the magical shop. and you know, where we see um, Helen Shaver's character, uh, Grace Downs, yeah, they had to purchase all these uh, books of spells and all this other stuff, the, mag the magical potions and all this utilities they need to perform them. <laughs> uh, there was actually a moment, which I know I had to cut short, but I kind of wish it was a little bit longer, um, where we begin to see that she was actually a witch herself, and that's where they performed that spell. And you can see how the fire suddenly uh, appears out of nowhere. And it just disappears here. Before Sarah has a vision that Nancy's going to attack her and her family and all. Oh, well, that, that too. Um, as for the actors themselves, um, Nev Campbell... Definitely uh, did an excellent job uh, portraying Bonnie, as as we saw. I mean, she's actually very sweet, very kind. I mean, she's trying to get over those scars that she had. Um, she's a sweet one. Uh, Rochelle, played by Rachel True, was was a cool girl too. I mean, trying to confront all these uh, racist bullying that she was given. But you definitely care for her. Also the fact that she's a black girl. I mean, I guess originally they were going to cast all white girls, but they end up just casting one. So at least now they're going for diversity here. Uh, Robin Tunney as Sarah, I thought she did a magnificent job. I mean, coming from her performance in Empire Records, uh, where yeah, she had to shave her head bald. She had to wear a wig to portray this role. Uh, I thought she was uh, definitely the strong one right here. She's she's more of the heroine type out of the group. And of course, uh, Carissa Bulk, who might as well be the villain of the group, you know, Nancy. I mean, she's totally powerful, totally psychotic, as you could tell. I mean, even her eyes, her snake eyes look incredibly scary very creepy too uh, especially that scene where she just goes completely nuts you know she starts shaking her head and just when she's about to throw uh, Chris off of the, the bedroom window I mean 
You don't want to get near her. <laughs> um, so they did a magnificent job, and the cast, um, Skeeto Witch, Kristen Taylor, Brecken Meyer, Nathan Neil Marsden, Helen Shaver, they're all great. Even Crypty Young. Um, they actually shot this movie in Los Angeles, of course, but the high school that they actually shot at was, believe it or not, Verdugo Hills High School in Tahunga. Um, I'm actually right close to where it is. Yeah, because I go to Tahunga sometimes, uh, mostly for, well, I, I go to Dollar Tree or any other places around. Yeah. Um, which actually has a, a Guadalupe uh, mural. You also do get to see that at the shop as well. I um, mean, it definitely plays exactly like what a Catholic school looks like. I mean, where you see, you know, a bunch of guys and gals wearing their uniforms. Sometimes they just wear different kind of clothes. Um, and the way we saw um, the girls, I mean, when they wore their uniforms, they looked pretty hot. <laughs> Uh, like they say, that the more successful the powers are, the shorter the skirts are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. So, um, has some significant writing. Uh, very uh, fresh, uh, coming from both Andrew Fleming and Peter Filardi. They did a great job. Um, Andrew, of course, you know, did a, a tremendous job with the direction and the way it turned out to be. And there's some de devilishly wicked scenes as above so below. <laughs> uh, yeah, the moment of course where Sarah just uses her magical spell at Nancy's bedroom where she turns her hair from red to blonde. That was like amazing. Or when they were at Bonnie's bedroom they did the levitation trick on Rochelle <laughs> that really works. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the scene where Nancy disguises herself as Sarah by using her hands and it changes, like transforms. Oh, there's some nice dialogue in the movie, too. Uh, and I know you saw one in the trailer where um, they just got out of the bus just so they can finally found their spot. Where this bus driver says, be careful we're all these weirdos. And Nancy just goes around and said, with her shades on, we are the weirdos, mister. <laughs> Very clever. And I thought the story was incredible. It worked. Um, they did maintain everything they could. Uh, joining in by producer Douglas Wick. And the score was uh, done by uh, Graham Revell, which actually had some uh, cover songs from the 80s and 70s, too. Uh, like songs like How Soon Is Now, you know, which is by the Smiths, but it was actually sung by Love Spit Love. Uh, Tomorrow Never Knows, which was a song that was written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney of the Beatles, uh, sung by Our Lady Peace. Um, then there's a, a song called Jump Into the Fire um, by Tripping Daisy uh, that was uh, written by Harry Nielsen and all. Yeah. Um, among others that they have, so it definitely has the 90s feel to it and shows. So it works. Um, so, highly recommend this movie. It's the perfect film to watch, especially on a Halloween night or whatever. So that's The Craft. And it's actually one of my favorite uh, witchcraft films. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.